私が知る限りでは初めてだ How to lead like Erwin Smith from Attack on Titan. Now, with the recent release of season 4, I thought that it's finally time to start doing character breakdowns from one of my favourite shows of all time, that being Attack on Titan. And to kick off the series, I'm going to be starting off with breaking down one of the greatest leaders, in my opinion, not just in anime history, but throughout all of TV show history, that being Commander Erwin Smith. The absolute badass that was the 13th leader of the Scout Regiment. And in this video, what I'm going to be covering is what strategies Erwin used in order to become such a great leader and how he was able to rally his troops time and time again despite being against all odds. And by doing this, you will not only be able to learn the strategic strategies that Erwin uses, but you also will learn how you can apply them so that you can implement into your life, in your business and in yourself in order to become a master at the art of leadership. So make sure you stick around to the end because by the time you finish watching, I can assure you that even your cat and dog will be rallying to your cause and charging straight behind you, screaming out, Sesame. This is Aaron, this is the Golden Knowledge, and this is how to lead like Erwin Smith. Now, just quickly, before I deep dive into the strategy in more detail, this video will contain spoilers up until the beginning of season 4 in the anime. So, if you don't want to be subjected to any spoilers up until season 4 of Attack on Titan, then I suggest you click off now. So how can you lead like Erwin Smith? What can you learn from him so that you become a much more strategic and masterful leader? Well, apart from screaming at the top of your voice and being more of a beast than the beast titan himself, the leadership strategy that Erwin uses comes down to the seventh strategy of war. Transform your war into a crusade. The morale strategy. The secret to motivating people and maintaining their morale is to get them to think less about themselves and more about the group as a whole. Involve them in a cause, a crusade against a hated enemy. Make them see their survival as tied to the success of the army as a whole. In a group in which people have truly bonded, moods and emotions are so contagious that it becomes easy to infect your troops with enthusiasm. Let your soldiers see you in the trenches, making sacrifices for the cause that will fill them with the desire to emulate and please you. Make both rewards and punishments rare, but meaningful. Remember, a motivated army can work wonders. Making up for any lack of material resources. 
And this is the strategy that Erwin uses in order to become such a masterful leader. Now, the definition of a leader is someone who commands a group, organization, or country, and who is in charge and responsible to achieve the goal that is set out by the group. Now, Erwin Smith was the leader of the Scout Regiment, a group of soldiers that's goal is to execute reconnaissance missions beyond the walls. To go beyond the walls means to go into uncharted Titan territory, which exposes the scouts to huge risk, making the scout regiment the most dangerous of all, but it also fighting and providing the greatest hope to humanity. This is why it's essential for Erwin to have a motivated army, to have an army who fights as a group and for a cause and not just for themselves. Napoleon Bonaparte once said, the morale is to the physical as three is to one. Meaning that the spirit of the soldiers is one of the most important elements in an army or any organization for that matter. As motivated soldiers can defeat an army that is three times its own size. This is the core principle that Erwin understood and what he applies to his leadership style. He understood that the spirit and the morale of the army is everything. And if he can maintain that spirit, he increases the group's chances of reaching the goal set out by three times. He does this by uniting his troops around a cause he makes them fight for an idea, the idea to save humanity. But he only wants soldiers that are true believers in the cause, and not just anyone. Konki's simple ni mo, i kakes go no hekigai chousa ni sanka shite morau ga, shibou suru kakuritsu wa san wari to itta tokoro ka. Yo nen go ni wa hotondo ga shinu daro. Shikashi, sore o koeta mono ga. この you see how he doesn't sugarcoat the harsh reality of being a scout. He tells everyone the blunt truth and it turns the majority of people away. But with the people that are left standing, it tells Erwin that these soldiers value the cause more than their own selfish interests. This is exactly the army that Erwin planned to build. It wasn't about the number of soldiers. It was about the inner strength and will of each individual soldier. One motivated soldier who truly believes in the cause is equal to three normal soldiers. This exact principle can be applied to work and in business. Strength does come in numbers, but hiring three motivated people who believe in your business purpose and cause is the same as hiring 10 normal employees. Ignore this step, then you're just going to be left with an army of mercenaries who only do it for the money, which clearly shows that they couldn't give a shit about you or the team. Unite your troops around the cause and make them fight for an idea. This way, you create a strong motivated force. The cause can be anything you wish, but you should represent it as progressive, so it seems that it is destined to succeed, which in Erwin's case, was to put an end to the Titan's rule and progress mankind. But you need to have true believers, and to test them, Take away something that is in their own self-interest, such as a low salary or hard working conditions. This isn't forever, it's just to test them. 
Because this way, if they really do believe in what you're doing, they will stay and fight no matter what happens. And the not so true ones will get up and leave. Just like how Erwin did this, you can also do this too. And before you know it, the only people that you're going to be surrounded by are people that are willing to ride or die for you. Which leads me to the second point regarding Erwin's leadership, which is that you need to lead from the front. I mean, it's all good uniting everyone around the cause, but if you don't practice what you preach, then expect the people around you to lose that motivation and start resenting you. Right from the beginning, your troops must see you leading from the front, sharing the same dangers and sacrifices that they face, taking the cause as seriously as they do. Instead of trying to push them from behind, make them run to keep up with you a prime example of this is how Erwin leads from the front when trying to save Erin from Reiner and Bertolt. Despite him being the commander and having his whole arm torn off, this badass motherfucker still commands the army to move forward with the mission. Exactly like how he preaches to his soldiers about putting the goal of the mission above your own interests. He clearly demonstrates that he himself also abides by that rule and shares the same sacrifices and dangers as his soldiers. By doing so, he can never be accused of ordering his soldiers to do something that he wouldn't do himself. And that's the thing. As a leader, you can't give an order to someone if you're not willing to do it yourself. If you're not willing to share the same dangers and sacrifices as your team, then don't expect them to have any respect for you, which will ultimately just demoralize the whole team. By leading from the front and proving how seriously devoted you are, your soldiers will then loyally and blindly follow you. Instead of trying to push them from behind, make them run to keep up with you. You as the leader should be the most devoted out of everyone. So prove this through your actions. Which leads me to the final point about Erwin's leadership which is to play to your soldiers' emotions. The best way to motivate people is not through reason, but through emotion. And it's needless to say that Erwin is an absolute master with motivating speeches and words. But the thing that makes Erwin's speeches a lot different than normal typical speeches is that he doesn't try to appeal to their emotions first. He first lowers his soldiers' defences by being grounded in reality. The key to a motivating speech is not necessarily the speech itself, but the setup prior to giving it. Human beings are naturally defensive, and if you begin with an appeal to their emotions, then they will see you as manipulative. But if you initiate a setup and execute it in the correct way, the person will then have much less control of their emotions, which will allow you to motivate them way more easily. The greatest leaders of all time always seem to have a sense of drama. They know when and how to hit their soldiers in the gut. And that is exactly what Erwin was a master at. I mean, check how he does this by convincing his troops to execute a suicide charge 
against the Beast Titan, where it seems that all hope is lost. ここに突っ立っていても、じきに飛んでくる岩を浴びるだけだ。すぐさま準備に取り掛かる。俺たちは今から死ぬんですか。そうだ。どうせ死ぬなら最後に戦って死ねということですか。そうだ。いや、どう